everyone and welcome back to my channel Alan's Cloud. My name is Alan Samsel and today I'm going to be talking to you about something that's near and dear to my heart which is reading. Uh, I've been doing it for years. I use a self-hosted app called Ubiquity but uh, it's dead. It's it's not been a developed project for quite some time uh, and it, it, it could use some updating. So uh, there's a new program out there called Kavita. It's still under development but I think it's at a stage where uh, everybody should be using it and I think it's Pretty much to the point where it could replace ubiquity. Uh, so stick around if that sounds interesting to you. This is for anybody that reads manga or ebooks uh, or comic books. Uh, it supports all three at the moment. And uh, so I'm going to be showing you how to install it in Docker and um, give you a kind of a walkthrough of it. So stick around. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to take a look here at uh, a couple of pages. Uh, so the first part here is I'm going to actually show you what Kavita looks like. Now, um, this is my Heimdall um, homepage app. Uh, this isn't uh, an official logo. I made this one myself. Um, and so it, it hasn't actually been entered into their repository yet, but just so you know. Uh, so this is the landing page. Uh, now, I've got it running through my uh, uh, Nginx proxy manager, but uh, normally you'd get to this at the IP address that you've installed it at uh, in colon 5000. That's the port. Uh, that it's running on. So when you first log in, um, you're going to create the uh, first admin account for it, uh, and it'll be blank uh, at, at the time. You won't have you know books or manga in there, uh, and you're going to come here under server settings, and you're actually going to add users and uh, libraries, uh, and and this is this is where you add them in. Um, so we'll, we'll get to some of that in a minute, but uh, just so you know. When you hit add library, you get a couple of options here. You can, you know, give it a name, um, you know, like comics, like that. Um, and then you select the type. Uh, ignore webtoon, it won't actually do anything. Um, but uh, comic, uh, and then you choose the folder. Now, when you've got it mapped in correctly, uh, I'm doing this on an open media vault. So um, uh, I'll, I'll show you the... Uh, container start lines for that what you are mapping it to inside of docker is this uh, manga folder uh, and so this goes back to my uh, uh, server and these are the files that are in there so i actually have under comics i've got it kind of split out whether or not they're in comic book format you know cbr cbz um, uh, in, and pdfs and uh, mangas as well i've kind of got them uh, split up so here under comics uh, you know, I've got a, a couple of uh, templates in there, and then you hit share, uh, in, and and then that adds it in uh, right in here, and you hit save, and it'll create it, and then it'll go out and index it, and it's fairly quick, uh, and um, you know, it'll it'll tell you in the logs whether or not it's had problems finding things, or if it can't, uh, you know, put a cover page on it, but uh, for the most part, it, it works fairly well. Now, the uh, thing that's different, uh, you know, Ubiquity, it uses the folder structure that you set up. Uh, but uh, Joe, the developer here for uh, Kavita, has a, a, a grander uh, scheme in mind. He wants it to be like the Plex for manga. Um, so he's, he's going to have it um, uh, parse out and, and find every single individual file name. Uh, and then if it's a, a books in a series, it'll put them together. It'll group them together. Uh, by volume, uh, by set, um, and also it's going to be scraping some metadata. So all of those things are kind of in the works. Uh, so right now, uh, say under uh, books uh, or under manga, you've got recently added, and if this is swipeable, I don't know if you can tell, I'm not actually clicking on that. So you can use the buttons here, uh, or it's interactive. So if you're doing this on an iPad, um, you know, it works great. So uh, under books, you know, you've got everything here, the the... Uh, the search function uh, works well and it'll show you what's in there now it doesn't support uh, tagging or collections at the moment that will uh, be coming in the future that is something that he's working on right now uh, that that takes some filtering uh, to get done but uh, you know uh, take this one here for instance this one is an ebook series or, or, or rather a light novel series and um, it's got multiples in there. And so here are the different volumes that come along with it. Uh, so when you select it, you can, let's look at the settings here. Uh, you've got different font options, which is uh, kind of cool. You can change the font 
size, uh, the line spacing. Um, so what, whatever it is that you need to uh, size it correctly for the device that you're reading on. Um, and he's got some options here. So you've got a dark mode if you want, uh, or light mode, and then the pagination here, you can actually tap on the edges versus using these buttons here up at the top. Uh, there'll be buttons at the top and the bottom of the page so that you can move on to the next ones. Um, or you can tap the edges. Uh, so that's, that's kind of nice. Uh, you get a table of contents uh, over here on the side if it's supported um, uh, by the individual book. And then you actually get a progress bar uh, here as well to, to tell you how far you've been in it. And, and that's for uh, ebooks. So when it comes to something like a manga, uh, again, you're going to have your different volumes here. And uh, here, this, this should look familiar if you're familiar with uh, book, you know, Ubiquity at all. Uh, the, but he's, he's added a couple of extra options. So uh, you can split it differently. You've got a navigation bar here. You can jump straight to a specific page. Uh, it will automatically size based on height to help with the, the differing devices that you may uh, be using. But it's kind of nice because it actually uh, is, is a really smooth transition if you are, say, reading it on the computer and then you switch over to an iPad or to a phone. Uh, it picks up right where you've left off um, and, uh, and it, it's very smooth. And then you've also got a, a button up here to close the reader and some different options on how you want to uh, render the pages. Um, so you click in the center and that goes away and you can, you know, go through all the pages. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's brilliant. Uh, it's, it's a great upgrade, even at this point. Uh, again, it doesn't uh, put things together in folders like uh, Ubiquiti used to. It isn't that simple. It's the, but uh, um, the way that it does things, I do like it. Um, so um, creating users is, is uh, just as easy. So server settings, uh, users, and again, add user, give it a name. Um, this uh, at the moment it doesn't support using a base URL so that you can create a subdirectory uh, on a domain. You can create a subdomain, right? So um, up here you can see I've got this uh, sitting at kavita.allenscloud.com, uh, and that works perfectly fine. Uh, he is uh, planning on working on that base URL piece so that you can use it uh, inside of. Um, uh, reverse proxies and things like that. But uh, again, that's uh, part of the future, future development plans. So uh, let's take a look at his GitHub. Uh, so Joe's page here, uh, Caradita uh, Kavita is, is uh, what it is uh, for GitHub. Um, right now, the stable and the development or nightly Images are exactly the same. They're at 0 0.4, I believe, is, is the, the current version. Uh, and that's, again, based on weeks and weeks worth of, of work to get it up to that point. Uh, so if you um, pull uh, nightly or stable from Docker right now, you're going to get the same version. Uh, that will not be true in the future. You'll have stable, and then the nightly version should actually have whatever is uh, being you know currently developed and worked on. And uh, we're going to be talking about that uh, in the Discord chat room uh, like we usually do. So uh, please come join us. Um, so uh, Joe, uh, this is Majora 2007. So, so he is the, the, the lead developer. He came up with this and has been working on it ever since. Um, so again, he's, he's uh, got uh, a lot of plans for this to support uh, new and better features in the future. Uh, but he is uh, himself learning um, C Sharp. Right. I think that's how you say that. So uh, his call out right here, he, uh, you know, even if you don't read uh, the, the manga or comic books or, or ebooks, uh, but you have an interest in, in helping uh, develop the project, he needs developers uh, with uh, C Sharp, uh, ASP.NET, Angular 11 or uh, CSS experience. So please uh, come find us in the Discord channel. Um, I've got a new forum set up and I'll show you that here in a minute. And I've already got a post in there. Uh, with the link to the Discord chat room. Uh, and then also it's got the uh, start lines uh, for using Docker um, uh, for using, uh, instead of the bind mounts, uh, that uh, Kazang, the guy who developed the Docker containers, um, shows you on his page. Um, I actually like using Docker volumes, and I'm using an Open Media Vault uh, for my system uh, where my, my Docker is sitting, and uh, it works great but uh, had like to change things up because he's using uh, bind mounts instead of Docker volumes. Um, 
So please, um, you know, support Joe. Give him, give him uh, some beer money here. And or uh, if you can support with uh, development help, that would be great. Uh, because he's uh, he just told me the other day he's probably got two years worth of, of uh, goals that he wants to achieve inside of uh, uh, this project alone. Uh, so over here, uh, Kazang, right, is uh, he, he hopped into the forum one day, uh, into the Discord chat, and we started talking about how great this, it would be if this program was in Docker. Uh, and he uh, volunteered to start creating them, and um, he's been posting those regularly to Docker Hub as these come out. Um, so on Docker Hub, you'll be able to find uh, the latest tags of, of Stable and Nightly. Uh, he's actually got um, uh, X386, uh, uh, AMD64, and ARM support. So if you want to run it off of uh, something like a Raspberry Pi, you can. Um, so here, in his examples, he's got uh, this this uh, one right here. Um, this is how you load in your uh, a bind mount for wherever your uh, actual mangas are located. Um, and then here, this this actually creates a bind mount for um, the the temp folder, the cache, the data, and the logs. Now. Um, in my version, you know, I at first attempted to combine all of those and create one Docker volume and then have all of those inside of it, uh, but it doesn't quite work. Uh, just a, a quirk of, of how the, the program works uh, under the hood. You actually have to create separate uh, volumes uh, for those individual folders in order for it to work correctly. Um, but again, so he's got it uh, for the, the normal Docker uh, start uh, command line interface, start line, which is what this is. And he's actually got it set up for Docker Compose. Uh, and again, once you run this, you go to the local host at 5000, whatever the IP address is that you set it up on, uh, and, and, and it'll pop up. Now in here, he's got it set up for the nightly. You can change that out and, and put in stable uh, if you want to be on the latest stable version versus nightly. Um, and I'll show you my version of this uh, so that it works inside of Open Media Vault. So, uh, this first one here is my change to it in Open Media Vault. Uh, you call it out by the uh, dev disk by label, uh, and that happens to be that uh, particular drive that's mounted as Media 5. Um, you know, again, I've, I've migrated this over. I'm running both Ubiquiti and uh, Kavita simultaneously uh, at the moment. Um, so in the folder on the uh, shared drive is just called Ubiquiti. Um, and I actually have all of those different folders underneath it, so it's not just manga. Uh, you can map to any folder, any subfolder that's under that main one, uh, and create those different libraries. Uh, so it works really well. But again, uh, I'm creating different Docker volumes: one for temp, cache, data, and logs. Um, and then uh, I actually uh, took his idea for compose, and I created this one here. Uh, which actually works inside of Portainer. So if you use Portainer and you go to the Stacks section, you can name the stack Kavita and then copy and paste um, you know, this into that stack section, hit go, and now, now once you've changed it to wherever your uh, media is located, that's the one thing that you're going to have to change is, is that particular location right there needs to be specific to where your files are located. Um, and this right here, I have it set for read only. Um, you know, I, you can change that to read write if you want to, but I don't. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, and, as, and as soon as you've got that correct, um, hit deploy, and it'll pop up, and it'll start working just like I've got it working um, on my system right here, because that's actually what I'm running right now. Um, let's see here, uh, Portainer in my open media vault and yeah so that's it right there that's Kavita and it's running as a stack um, so you hit add stack give it a name copy and paste it in right there um, and then hit uh, deploy the stack and it'll pop up on uh, port 5000 it's uh, it's too easy um, so here over on my uh, new forum it's uh, forum.allenscloud.com uh, as you can see up here in the top, I've, I've got this uh, new uh, topic in here under uh, program recommendations. Uh, if you go to latest, it's, it's the latest one up there. 
uh, and I've pretty much just got uh, links to the Discord chat is in there. So if you want to come join us, uh, click on that. That's the invite to the room. Um, again, talking about the kind of developers that Joe needs, uh, the links to the uh, uh, to GitHub locations, uh, and I've actually got those um, uh, my um, Docker start commands and the portainer uh, uh, laid out in there. Now you're going to have to be careful with the spacing. This uh, left justified all of this, so that won't actually work. Um, so unfortunately, it is going to have to look like this. Uh, as far as the spacing and, and you know uh, and everything or else uh, it will tell you that it, it has an issue and uh, Portainer will actually show you that that there's an error um, so um, that's pretty much it for Kavita again I, you know I think this is a great program there's 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 lots going on here um, uh, it lots of development um, uh, so I, I see great things uh, in the future for this program so uh, that's it for this topic today. Uh, again, Kavita, great program. Uh, I think it is the uh, ubiquity killer uh, of the future. And uh, please come and join us uh, in the Discord chat. And uh, you can find me up here at, at any, any of these socials uh, and or my forum there if you need any of this information. So uh, please come visit us. Thanks. Have a good one.